Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana and I'm joined by Jessica and today we're going to be doing a C2C. Um, so Jessica, my first question for you is in your experience, either at home or school or work, do you feel like there's a good balance between resource and energy development with environmental sustainability? And do you think that that balance is possible? I think that that balance is most certainly possible. It's especially impressive to see how Canada does it as well. Like our whole system with natural resources and having so many of the companies that are, for example, in oil and gas that are already investing into environmental sustainability is just astonishing. There's so much money going into it. So it's almost better that way because they're already here at the head of, you know, the CO2 emissions and everything like that. So it's, it makes sense for them to be backing the environmental sustainability research and trying to get to net zero while still, you know, creating oil and fracking and drilling for gas. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And in terms of your school, can you just elaborate a bit more on what, with what you're doing in school and like what you, what's been your personal experience with, uh, with energy industry personally? Yeah. So I'm currently in mechanical engineering, so it is a little bit more in depth into the energy sort of resources and everything, the development side of it, which is pretty cool. Um, currently I'm taking a like engine, like combustion engines course. So that deals with a little bit of the emission side as well and how they're trying to take, you know, these combustion engines to more efficient systems. Mm -hmm. So even regards to that, we're already in engineering. They're trying to think of ways to make that get closer to net zero. Um, and I know like petroleum classes, there's some that are like thermodynamics and such like that. So trying to, you know, get your turbines to a more efficient level and everything like that. So constantly we're learning about how to make things more efficient and efficiency equals like less emissions, which is always the goal. So of course, you're never going to have anything like perfect all the time. But the fact that we're always getting so much closer is just really cool. Like when they started making combustion engines, they were running like at an efficiency of like 10%. Now it's like 25 to 35%, which doesn't seem like a crazy jump, but it is a lot better. So I'm hoping with all the technology that we're getting, eventually we'll be able to be at like maybe 80%, 70%, which would be such little amount of emissions. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so exciting to see that how that's that's growing every single day that's awesome yeah it's awesome um a question for you that i have so how were your views on natural resources affected when you moved provinces and like change your social environment yeah great question yeah so i grew up in calgary alberta and i've been here pretty much my entire life and obviously being here natural resources especially obviously in the more oil and gas or mining and those kinds of fields are a lot more talked about and discussed and openly kind of in the conversation here growing up right and i have obviously a couple of family members who are engineers so i was always exposed to that um whereas i went to ottawa for a university um and i think it's just it was really interesting to me to see the differences in culture and um yeah just general i guess seat guys of the people out east versus out west um i did find that i mean i mean obviously there's always people on either extremes that are just not fun to deal with um you know obviously i experienced um a lot out west or a lot out east of people who my colleagues in environmental studies who obviously we care about the environment and we want to you know lower emissions and eventually get to net zero and just do all those things um but it was interesting sometimes to see people would say things like yeah like we should just completely cut off oil and gas like right now and I was like we're sitting in our classroom with like our lights on like their cell phones and I was just like yeah I was like well <laughs> I don't know about that like you know whereas like obviously out west here 
you know, when I, when I told people that I was going into environmental studies, they were just like, oh, environmental studies. Like, so that there'll always be people on either ends that, you know, have differing views, right? But I think what was interesting was that a lot of people in both places were able to kind of see the middle and see both sides of it, right? So I, once you kind of start having those conversations, you see that there's a lot more common from province to province than there is uncommon, I would say. Um, I think also this is part of what makes Canada strong is that we do have a, a really large variety of perspectives and opinions throughout the country. That's what makes us different and diverse. Um, and I think the more differences there are that can come together, the more um, just closely knit we can be with so many different perspectives, right? So I think that it's important to not invalidate either perspective from whatever province you're from because everyone's experience is incredibly valid um and it's just yeah it's definitely it's, it's just interesting to see the differences in uh in culture and and what's talked about so yeah that is really awesome especially that you were kind of able to still connect with both sort of groups of people and almost like bring it together which is really cool yeah. since you did live in multiple locations did you find that the environmental sustainability is prioritized across the nation or if not like which places were prioritized differently mm, that's a really good question um i would say they are both they're prioritized from like all my experience but just in different ways um, I would say that in Ottawa, when I was there, obviously, it's a very, it's more of a government heavy city. And so there's definitely a lot more emphasis put on public measures. And um, I guess certain like restrictions or rules or things like that. I did have some experience with Environment and Climate Change Canada and the government. And so I definitely saw, I guess, the more top down like HR organization approach to environmentalism and sustainability. So I think over there, it's more heavily talked about, I would say. Um, in different ways, whereas my experience in Calgary, I find that it is spoken about, but in different ways. So obviously, if you're talking to people who are in the resource industry, like I think there's a big misconception that people don't care about the environment if they're just in resources. And that's that's just like not the case. Like I've experienced a lot of people in Calgary who are in the resource or in the energy sector, and they talk about how much they love the environment, how much they're so passionate about the earth, um, about like how like they, like you mentioned how many. Um, companies and businesses actually are putting a lot of money into carbon capture and other sustainable practices like that. So I think that it's not a matter of more or less, more about like different, I guess, format or way that it's actually delivered. You know what I mean? And I think that probably in, out East, I did the environment and like climate change. I, I heard that more as like a common conversation piece. I definitely heard that more there as opposed to here. Um, but I mean, again, obviously, climate and location and heritage and background all factor into um, what people are focused on, what they need to focus on. Obviously in Calgary, we have a big, big amount of our like sustainability as people from the energy sector, right? So of course it's gonna be more talked about here than it is somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I would say just different, just different, yeah. It's prioritized, but it's just like the conversation's different. From yeah. when you go across the country that's really cool yeah exactly yeah um so for you why do you think that conversations surrounding like energy and resources and climate change and are also polarized i think that the common misconception is that natural resources equals like environmental strain right like that's the first thing that people think about when they think of oil and gas, they think of the oil sands and those god awful pictures that they see on the internet. Um, but that is actually like very far from the truth. It's, it's important that you keep the environment, you know, su sustainable, otherwise we'll never be able to continue drilling our resources and you know, fracking and everything if the environment is neglected. So especially in Canada, we have more laws about the environment and making sure that everything is practiced properly and that nothing like animals and habitats aren't destroyed in the process. So I think that's almost the best part about it because when you get to see these projects, you know, you see some some company just installing a pipeline 
and you see that there is some kind of destruction at the beginning to dig holes, put this pipeline in. And then you see the end and it looks like nothing's ever been touched. Like it's immaculate, there's trees, there's green, it's, it's awesome. So I think they'd be less polarized if people were more open to learning about the what really happens rather than seeing these god-awful pictures that people post and they're like oh my goodness look at the oil sands look how dirty that is there's no green no but again like when you see pictures like that on the internet there's a whole other story behind it so it would be really nice to see more I guess in-depth conversations about it that way it won't be such a scary topic like it won't be like uh divided almost that's how it feels it's either you're for the environment or you're for natural resources but you can definitely be for both and I wish more people knew that or saw it that way because if we can kind of like link the two together we could easily get to net zero oh 100 percent. I totally I totally agree with that too that it's just it, yeah it is so polarized and it does feel like you're either for or against for you or one side or the other but there really is a lot more interplay between those fears than we realize right and I think that we all have so many varying degrees of our own just even as people like we were, we're not we don't really fit into boxes yeah. that well, right so I think the same thing goes for what we believe in is that obviously there are a few things that are very firm for people but when it comes to things that have more nuance it is important to be able to learn from both sides right and to be able to be willing to teach as well as to take in from no matter where you're from or what you're learning about you know and I 100% agree with that. You know, not everything has to be black or white, right? Like there's always some kind of gray area. And I think just like you said, everybody does like, you know, everyone has different opinions and different views, but that's, it's almost a great thing because then, you know, when you start talking, you start having the conversation and you say, well, what about this? Maybe that other person didn't think about it that way or anything like that. But when you have conversations, it sort of helps get a more general idea of what's going on or what we're missing or anything like that, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, and then my other question for you I had here was, how do you see people in your own personal circles discussing these topics? And like, do you find that whether it's like with your family or friends or colleagues at school, like, do you find that it's an often balanced conversation for a lot of sides being advocated for or do you find that sometimes it could use a bit more bringing people together and you know in that kind of sense growing up in cold lake it was definitely a like pro natural resources place hmm. probably a little bit more than calgary is because they're they're right in the midst of it right like it's it's not very far to just drive to work and all of a sudden you're seeing wells and pump jacks yeah. um so i'd say that like in a sense, it's environmental sustainability isn't talked about as much, but it's still very much a concern. Mm -hmm. When I was working for the summer, I was an operator out um, operating the wells and making sure everything was running properly. And it's like top priority is, is the environment, making sure that there's no spills. If there is a spill, it's cleaned up properly it's ensured that it is absolutely not going to leak. It will not stay there. Um, it's, it's very clean. If you're going out and you see these like drilling sites, it's so clean that you're kind of amazed because you know some pictures you see or some, some common misconceptions is that it's, it's very dirty, but it's, to me, it was one of the cleanest work environments I've ever been in because everything is just so upkept and it's nice talking to, you know, the coworkers that have been there for years and been doing it for so long that they have it down to a T. It's awesome because they are so pro natural resources, but they're also very pro environment. They take care of everything. So having conversations with them was very mind opening, even for myself, because I, I've always been pro natural resources. That's how my family has been like oil and gas has put food on our table ever since I was a young girl. So it was really interesting to see other opinions on it and like opening my eyes to actually how important it was to do your job properly 
and safely and never forgetting that you have to leave things the way that they were when you got there or better. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah, I, I definitely, I really resonate with that last sentence for sure is I think even to that point, like obviously for me in environmental studies, I was learning a lot about sustainability and those kind of things. But the more I'm getting into it, the more we're realizing that sustainability is not outdated, but it's kind of where we're finding new ways, which is more regenerative design, where it's like, you don't just minimize the damage, you make sure that you are putting back in and you're making, you make sure that you're kind of perpetuating that cycle. And you're, I guess, yeah, like you said, like leaving the environment as well as you put it or took as, as well as you had it before, um, or making it better, right? So I think that that's always something to consider in all facets of anything we do is that we are inherently part of nature, we are nature, right? So whatever we do or take from the environment, it's important that we're able to bring that back and um, to not have it be depleting, pleading, but also making sure that we are actually fostering a healthy environment between us and and nature. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely an important mindset to have. And I think that kind of like you said before, it's just common to think that the, for example, the oil and gas companies, that nature and taking care of it and taking care of the environment is so far from their minds but it's it's not because otherwise you know there would be nothing to go back to for them there'd be nothing to drill nothing to nothing to um like no natural resources Mm -hmm. to take so it's it's really important to to know like I wish more people especially in university when I go to school it seems like it's such such a wild concept that the very companies that are drilling the oil and drilling the gas are the same companies that are trying to make sure that, you know, the CO2 emissions are cut down or they're doing things properly or that when they do install pipelines, they're making sure that every single little frog is out of the way and put in a different place so that when they're putting it in and they're digging in the ground, nothing's going to be harmed. And then eventually, you know, they bring it back and it's so green and some people I think I wish people saw the after too not just like the during yeah and you know you'd see a lot more of what actually goes into it and how people maybe not necessarily talk about how important it is but it's just well known that when you're out there like that's one of your top priorities other than you know safety yeah one of my questions for you is what is something you wished that people knew about environmental sustainability in energy development? Mm. So many things. <laughs> I, know. Um, I would say, I mean, first of all, I really want to emphasize the fact that I think that the only way we can really go forward, especially as a generation um, of young Canadians who are trying to make the world a better place, trying to make Canada a better place, um, is that we really do need to to come together and to find a balance, right? There are always going to be people who are on either side of the conversation. There's always going to be people who have varying um, just priorities, you know, and, and that's completely valid. But I think it's just important to recognize that, you know, people and planet and prosperity, all of those things, all of those fears hold equal value. And we can't really have a sustainable long lasting civilization if we're not able to take all those things into account and I think it is possible to have all of those things right I think it's possible that we achieve our environmental goals and also maintain our energy and our economy and our people at the same time and I think as young people we can definitely do both and we have been learning and we have been I think there's so many insane innovations that are coming up like all the time for just environmental sustainability and regenerative design and it's just, it's really cool to see that. Um, and I think that also what I wish people would know um, kind of in between the spheres of environmentalism and energy and resources. I know for me, I mean, I have been literally a tree hugger since I was a kid. Like I love the environment. I love nature. Like, I want to go live in the forest someday and like have my own garden. I'm very much, you know, that's, that's like my passion. That's my world. Um, but I do think that obviously right now we are still living in a situation where we do need oil and gas, right? Like we, there's so many things right now that I would not have in my own home, even whether it's an object, like what's made from petroleum products or actually the energy itself. Right. And I think that until 
we get to a place where we actually don't need it and we can sustain people completely with like, you know, it'll be good eventually. But while we're still in need of those things, it might as well be coming from Canada where we have the highest environmental standard and we can enforce lower and lower and lower emissions every single year, right? Because even even the products that we want for renewables, like solar panels or wind turbines, you need oil and gas to make the actual products that make that, right? It's just kind of a given. So I think that it's just important to note that we do need both and we, and you know, as long as we do need it, let's make sure it's the coming from the best environmentally standard place, you know? So I think that, yeah, that balance is 100% possible. I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. You know, you may as well be taking it out of your backyard where you know exactly what kind of environmental restrictions and stuff are versus somewhere else where maybe they aren't as environmentally conscious. Yeah. Um, I also think that it's very cool that we both had grown up in such different environments, right? Like, you know, you <laughs> were like a little tree hugger, as yeah. you said. <laughs> And I was more so like oil and gas, you know, black gold, basically. And it just goes to show that that's why conversation is so important, because as I grew up, I learned that the environment was so, so, so important to natural resource development. And it seems like you also realize that along with the environment, it's also important to have this resource development for again, like all the stuff that we have, like, you know, computers, the phone that you go on, like you're hundred percent correct. We can't live without those resources right now. So we may as well just make them as clean as we can and eventually have the end goal of net zero. Exactly. And I love that. I mean, I'm so glad that we got a chance to talk. So I feel like it's, it's so amazing to have, like you said, people from completely different worldviews and backgrounds still being able to come together and have a conversation. And it's just right? like, it's good. Like I like learning from other people and I like, I like that sharing of information and that sharing of experience that you wouldn't get if you were just talking to people who all agreed with you or all had the same opinions or background. Right. So I'm just, I'm very grateful that we got the chance to, to share and just to learn and grow together. Me too. Me too. It's really, I think it's the best part about, um, like being in this industry is constantly learning, right? Like you're constantly learning about, just how to make everything better, how to make things more efficient, how to help save the environment and make it a better place, which is really cool. Totally agree. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm Tatiana and I am with SFC. Thank you. Mm -hmm.